It's Transmissions, I'm Nick Harcourt. I'm here with Bruce and Marie from Freedom Fry at the World Art Stage. Thanks for coming and playing for us, guys. Thanks, thanks. for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Are you ready for 21 questions? Go. First musical memory. That was probably, I would say for me, my dad playing in the living room in the morning in his robe, air guitar playing, and dancing to ACDC. Nice. That would probably be my dad's first, yeah. First musical instrument. Drums. Started on drums, I was like 12 years old, and uh, that's all I wanted to do was play the drums for whatever reason. Then what? I got boring, I don't know why. I just mm. wanted to play guitar after that. When was the moment you realized you wanted to do music? I loved music and I wanted to be a part of it too, so I pretty much taught myself drums and started playing with them and moved over to guitar. I just loved doing it, just naturally we were like the Partridge family. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the bus? Uh, almost. We had a, like a Chevy van that kept breaking down everywhere. What was the first song you played or sang? You want me to say that? Um, I think it was probably Stormy Weather, I would think. Yeah, because that's my uh, singing classes. Or there's also French songs on my own that I was singing, but in a more professional, like in a more the professional level was probably Stormy Weather. Who's your favorite artist, dead or alive, who does what you do? Johnny Marr, I would have to say. He was definitely the one who made me want to play guitar in a specific way. It's because he really had his own style. Um, all the reverb, the multi-tracking, all that stuff that really got me. Because I would listen to it as a teenager and just be like, how the, how the hell did he do that? You know, what's going on? It, it, I think it was the mystery of it more than anything, because you don't get it on first listen, you know, and you could still listen to it. I still listen to it and I don't know exactly what each guitar is doing. For me, it's just, he was a genius. He's a genius. Follow-up question, did you like Morrissey as well? I did, <laughs> I did. Other people either love him or hate him. It's, it's funny, because like, so many people hate the Smiths, but I don't know why he, he does it for me. If you didn't do this, what would or could you do? I think I would uh, probably be working still in fashion because it's what I was doing before. And I still like designing, I still design for us. So probably I would still be working in fashion, I would say. What's your idea of happiness? Um, one of those hats for the beer cans sit <laughs> in it and uh, a beach with her somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say us. <laughs> yeah. So, but he, he always... <laughs> I don't know, something like that. That's great. Yeah, but if he's got the, the hat with, with yeah, beer cans I mean. on, what, what do you got? I got him. Oh, I think that's, that's enough. So nice. You don't want like a coconut bra or something like that? If you want coconut or like, bra or like <laughs> I don't know, uh, draped in a topical. French flag or something. Oh, I don't that's know. nice. That's a nice visual. That could be our next album cover. <laughs> what, what's your idea of happiness? It would be, um, I mean, seriously, it's simple things, though. It's... Um, we don't do that for fame. I really do it for us to have fun, and I think it's what we're... I'm pretty happy right now, so I would say it's probably what we're doing and being together, and... Yeah, I think that's, that's what it is in our home, together, and with our friends, family. Yeah, being <laughs> healthy, creating music. Healthy, alive, and... Yeah, that's probably what happiness is. What's your idea of misery? It's people c killing people. Is yeah, I would, I would say that. I mean, what we see on the news yeah. now far too often kind of stuff, the stuff that happened at the Paris concert, at the Eagles of Death Metal, that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. just that shouldn't People be happening. People whose purpose in life is to kill some or to make someone miserable. Yeah, unhappy people. Shoot them into space program. Every time there's an asshole, you just put him in a. <laughs> <laughs> you just put it in a capsule, and they're like, "Yeah, you create yeah. a world of your own, and you just shoot them all there." This is yeah. This is something we we're talking about. It wasn't a violent thing. It was really like once we established there's another planet elsewhere where life is possible. Oh, so you don't just leave them floating no, in no, a tin no, no, can. No, 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 no. You send them somewhere. You clearly yeah. don't fit in. You either want to kill other people or you sure. drive really poorly. Um, or, you know, there's just, uh, there's something that, you know, you, d you just don't fit into this, on this planet. Right. And that's, you know, best of luck, you know, we'll just, we'll send you off to this planet and you can start, you know, the next one. All I right. can see the logo already, the little capsule, we see the face going into space, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, so that's, should we start space. that program. I don't know if this ties in, but you're allowed one superpower. Just one. <laughs> what is it? I always say invincibility. 
because I think that would remove any doubt in your mind. You could just do... So like being bulletproof and... Yeah, totally. No you could diseases. Like, I'm going to take a nap. You lay down on train tracks. You know, there's just like, you could go and do anything anywhere and you wouldn't have to worry about, I don't know. I would fly, shot. maybe, personally. Fly. Fly? Mm. Morning person or, or night person? Morning person, for sure. Yeah, morning person too, I would say. Is it easier to write a love song or a revenge song? Love songs are easier. They're, they're hard not to write for, for me, actually, because I feel like when you're kind of mumbling words, when you're starting to get a melody together, for some reason my tendency is always to stick words like heart and love in there, and I have to like kind of step back after I've got a melody in place sometimes and change and think about what I want to say and yeah, kind we, of got we the actually, story line. We rarely write love songs because... But it's intentional. Intentional, yeah, intentional. And you're in love. Exactly. So we, we can't make people want to puke <laughs> too much. Um, we have to control it. Digital or analog? Digital. Do you have a, a ritual before a show or recording? Any yes, kind we of, do. Yeah. We actually, uh, with Johnny, that's not here right now, but um, we actually, um, every time before the show, we put our hands together and we say, un, deux, trois, putain, which means one, two, three. Can I say that? Excuse me? <laughs> Can I say that right now? But it's in French, so it's, it's in not French, a bad word. So it sounds really, it sounds much better. It sounds sexy. <laughs> right. yeah. Say no more. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, that's what so we good. say. So that's our ritual. You've played a lot of shows with a lot of different artists, I'm sure. Do you have a, a backstage horror story you'd like to share with us? Uh, backstage horror story. This, actually, this is like a setting up for the show Horror Story. We went to Miami to play a show, really big show, 3,000 capacity room, and um, we didn't bring a sound guy because we thought the venue had one, and uh, it turns out that they didn't have one. Um, so we thought that the show would not go on. But uh, we managed to give the, uh, we, there was about half an hour where we were freaking out, and then we managed to give some money to the guy from the headlining band, the sound guy, and he saved our asses Wow! in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> but we freaked out because for half an hour we're trying to communicate with that guy. And there was like, a guy there who was attempting to do sound, but he had never run the board and he didn't speak English. We're like, and it was a, and he, it would, was really he wouldn't find the, the, the monitors and well, we couldn't hear anything. So it was like it was really tough. tragic. We were, <laughs> we were scared. <laughs> and, and it ended up being one of our best shows. So. And yeah. the lesson is? Bring a sound guy. So <laughs> <laughs> always, always bring a sound guy. Check, double check. Yeah. Yeah. What would be the title of the movie of your life? You both have to answer this separately without looking at each other. Uh, French Connection 2. Yeah, the French Connection <laughs> Part 2, the sequel. Is Gene Hackman also in that? Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> part 2, yeah. Une deuxième partie. My movie would be called um, the, Bruce Dris the Bruce Driscoll Experience. I don't know, that's super boring, <laughs> and no one would buy tickets to it, but that's what it would be called. I would. Well, you never know. I yeah, mean, you know, right. if by the time you have the movie of your life, you're like hugely famous, exactly. everyone's going to be like, exactly. oh man, I want to go see the Bruce Driscoll <laughs> yeah. experience. Yeah, Bruce Wars. I got like a Star Wars vibe. What's your current state of mind? Hungry. <laughs> my mind is actually turned off right now. Once it hits like end of December, my brain just kind of like, I don't know if it's just from childhood, like Christmas break or whatever, but really feels like my brain like is off again until January. And um, we, we should point out that we're shooting this like Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. <laughs>